very much. It was just a vision. No practicality in this. It's just actually that. Wouldn't that be a lovely world? Christiana Figueres, who led the UNFCCC process, was a wonderful optimist. You know, it was going to be even better after 2100. And and it, in that role, thank God she was an optimist because you know you wouldn't want to be anything else. And she managed to do something that no one thought was possible. Some of you may also know Bill McKibben, and he's never been known as an optimist, and, and he was true to form on this one. His last words, it hurts to think that we blew it. So the world is going to change, and the question is how much damage do we want to do on the way? Storytelling brings forward the change from that brink of collapse. You know, it will change, but can we do it before we get to that brink of collapse? And maybe in doing that, we save millions of lives, countless species and their ecosystems, countless communities and their own stories, and all just from telling a few stories. Seems like a worthwhile pursuit. So my lovely rational slide here that just summarizes the whole thing, you know, climate action is entirely rational, decisions are emotional, fear doesn't change, change long-term behaviors, Positive storytelling attracts people to a better world. So, and so that's it, solved. But there is there's one final hurdle we've got to get over. So I've got 80 visions. I've actually got a few more now, but I've got started with 80, and we need a few more. So many of you will have seen something like this about technology adoption. You know, you need to kind of get to about 16% of a population, and then everyone, and then it just rolls out and everyone takes it. So I've got 80. Maybe if I had 80 million. Would that be enough? That, no, that's just one percent of the world population. So I, I decided well, I'm having enough. I break it down by region. It might make it a bit more manageable. So I only actually need 85 million in North America, 81 million in Europe, and in the little Australia, I only need four million. Is that a feasible dream? As a stubborn optimist, I can only say yes. So your challenge now is that you have to write the next vision. It's actually not easy. It's a really hard thing to do. What are your real priorities? How does that challenge your current lives? Because flying to London from Australia to talk about this, does that actually, is that consistent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not sure. And to be real, to the vision to work, you actually have to share it. You have to share it with your friends and your family and your colleagues and the taxi driver and anyone who listens to you. You are the storytellers what the future will be, and the only way to have the future that you want is to create it. So you can write your vision and you can share it on the website, or you can write it on a little postcard and you've got on your seat and you can send it back to me. Um, but that's your mission, you have to write your own vision and you have to share it. Now as part of the book, I didn't want to write my vision, I thought I'd just leave it to all those smart people. Yeah. But my wife told me I had to write the vision. And I always do what she says, even when she's 10,000 kilometers away. Um, so I'll read a little bit of my vision just to finish off my piece. Before we go. Yeah, be clever people to talk. 